Hi, I'm Beth from Soul Country, and I am so excited to be the caboose on the 2022 NCW Sew Along on New Year's Eve. I was thrilled when Lauren asked me to do this, and even though I was kind of nervous and hesitant, I really didn't want to give up that opportunity. I am not going to be filming live simply because I don't have a setup for a live video. I film on a camera still. So hopefully next year if she invites me back, I will have a camera and I can do it all live. But I will be chatting in the comments. So please feel free to chat with me, ask me any questions, or we'll just talk about other things that are going on. I just started my YouTube channel this year. I've been wanting to do it for a while and finally gone up the nerve to start one. I teach in person all the time. But YouTube was something new, but here it is, and I'm loving it and having a lot of fun, and I finally do not cry after I finish a video anymore, so that's a positive. I am making the Necessary Clutch Wallet, and this is a pattern that I'm sure you've seen many times before, and at least today you've seen it probably five times. So I don't expect to give you any great secrets or tips, and technically, the other sewists are way better than me, but what I hope to do in my video is I hope to break it down in a way that it can motivate you to sew on yourself so that you feel comfortable and confident to get started. So this year, I have had a great year of sewing, making videos, meeting new people online and things like that, and in 2023, I really hope to do even more. I'm planning on going to SME in Tennessee. That will be my first SEM, SME event and I am so excited to attend. I hope to see many of you guys there. I hope to make at least four videos every month in 2023 and I hope to sew up lots of patterns. I sew a lot of tester patterns and I hope to do even more. So please let me know in the comments what your goals are for your sewing this year and what all you've accomplished in 2022. Also, thanks to Lauren and her team for giving me this opportunity. It means so much to me. You have no idea, and I'm really thankful to be a part of it. So now, let's go sew this wallet and get ready to celebrate 2023 coming into the world. Before we get started talking about the pieces um, for this wallet, for those that have not seen it before, I'm going to just do a quick run through of the features of this wallet. So we have a magnetic snap. Here at the front and then when you open it up you have credit card slots on both sides you have slip pockets on both sides and then you also have a zipper pocket here in the middle and dividers here also very unique wallet very quick so so now that we've looked at it know what it looks like let's talk about the components the main thing i want you to realize is that there is four components to this wallet when we kind of understand that there's only four components, that helps us to mentally be ready so that you're not feeling stressed about sewing, you don't feel anxiety, you know that you can complete those components. So the first thing we have is we have our main body. Yes, we have a main body exterior and interior lining. We have our flap. It's going to go on the top. We have credit card slots and we have a zipper pouch. These four components, these four things, it's all we need to make this wallet. It's just a great design. So when you start getting stressed about a wallet or thinking you can't do this when you see this wallet, just remember four things, that's all we're doing. So the way this wallet comes together is that we would have the flap here, we turn it over, we would put the credit card slots there in the middle. We will put the zipper pocket there. Okay, and then these sides will fold up and actually become our gussets. This is all we need. So let's break down each of these individual pieces together so you can feel confident sewing this up on your own. I'm going to be sewing a wallet with the same materials as this one. So I have that sample one over there just to show you the components, but this is what I'm using. So let's talk first about the flap. We have two pieces to our flap. We have our exterior, and then we have our lining. Both of my pieces, I'm using a cotton woven. The interfacing on both of mine, on the back, I have an SF 
101 equivalent. I will put a link to what I use, but whatever you have on hand that is equivalent to SF-101, that would be what I use as the first layer of interfacing. Then I add a layer of fleece, which is Thermoland, and I have it cut out of my seam allowance. You could leave it in your seam allowance if your machine can handle it. You also could use a layer of Decavillite if you want. The flap, the sturdiness will kind of depend on you. So once you get it interfaced, feel it and see if you like that feel. If you want a sturdier flap, you can always add a layer of something extra on there. The other thing you're going to notice about my flap is my shape is just a slight bit different than the pattern. I just chose to draw mine out a little differently. You could also make yours angled if you wanted to or even square. It's just a personal preference. On your exterior, you want to have your curve at the bottom. On your interior, the curve is actually going to be upside down. So your straight line will be at the bottom of this piece. The reason why is because when you flip up your flap, if you're having directional fabric, of course, when you flip up your flap, that way it looks right. I went ahead and used my, the pattern piece to install my magnetic snap. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put these right sides together and I'm going to sew the curved part, leaving this straight top open with a fourth of an inch seam allowance. That is the seam allowance for this pattern, so I'll be using it consistently throughout. So let's put these right sides together and let's go ahead and sew the flap. Once you get your flap sewn together, you can choose to make notches in your corners if you want, or you can just turn it as it is. I typically just turn mine. I do not make the notches there and I don't have problems. I do see I have a little bit of overhang on this piece, so I am going to trim that up really quick. But with a fourth of an inch seam allowance, mine usually turns out okay, but definitely feel free to make the notches. Okay, now that I have that trimmed, I'm just going to turn this. And then you can take this over to the iron, press it out really nicely. If you wanted to, whenever you turn your flap out, if you feel like it's still not sturdy enough, you could even slip another piece of interfacing in here. Okay, now that I got that pressed out, all my corners poked out, I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away around the sides I just sewn, and then I'm going to baste across the top with that same eighth of an inch. Just be mindful you do have a magnetic snipe on the bottom. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to 3.5, and I'm going to sew from my exterior, but when I get close to that flap, I'm just going to use my finger to make sure I don't get too close to it. Flap is done, which means the first component of this wallet is finished. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mark the center of this flap, and I'm going to pull out my exterior piece. For my exterior piece, I, you know, of course we use the pattern to cut it out, and I'm using a piece of vinyl. As you can see, my vinyl is not stiff. It is a very thin vinyl. I could interface this with, like, um, a deck of a light if I wanted to. But I don't feel like I need it. I made several with this vinyl and I feel comfortable with the way it feels when it's done. So I leave this alone. If you're using cotton woven, definitely interface it with either SF101 or a deck of a light, whatever your preferred um, interfacing is. After you cut it out and you have it interfaced, the next thing you want to do is you want to put your magnetic snap on. Again, I use the pattern piece to find the placement for the magnetic snap. After I have my magnetic snap attached, I simply fold it in half, and then I'm going to mark my top. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I want my magnetic snap up on both pieces, and I'm going to lay them down, matching those center marks. I'm going to put a clip right there. And then I'm going to base this in place along that top edge. 
So now that I have my flap attached to my exterior, I'm going to pull out my lining piece. The lining piece for this wallet is cut from the same pattern piece as your main panel exterior. I'm going to do the same hack that most people do with this pattern and um, it's just a little bit of deviation from the pattern and almost everybody does it now this way so I don't know if we can consider it a hack but it's pretty well known. So after I cut that out I interface mine with this piece I used it's called Royal Pixie Premium. It's in between SF101 and Decaville Light. That is what I'm using on my lining piece. I'll leave a link for that interfacing in the description, but you could use two layers of SF101, you could use one layer of Decaville Light, whatever you have on hand, you could use it. After I have it interfaced, the next thing I do is I fold this lining piece in half this way. And you can either make a crease or a line. I made lines just for the purpose of this video. And then I open it up and I fold it the other way. And I either make a crease, usually I just make a crease there. But for the video, I drew those lines. Right there where they intersect, I put a dot. You're gonna put your ruler on that dot. And what I do is I measure two and a half inches along the long side from that dot. So two and a half inches to the left and then two and a half inches to the right. This line will be five inches long. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to cut, cut that open along that line. So a five inch line in my lining and this is going to be our birthing hole. So you can see I'm just cutting directly on that line. Okay, it's open. And so now we'll go on to our next step and finish this piece. We take our lining, if it's directional, be careful. And I'm gonna place it right sides together. For the directional people, you want it, of course, this is the bottom of your wallet where your snap is, so you want that lining to go that same direction. I'm just gonna put a couple clips here and then I'm gonna sew completely around the perimeter, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna reach in and I'm gonna start with one corner. What I usually do is I just kind of push my thumbs in and start working it out. Since this is just a cut and not any stitches, I'm gonna be really gentle because I don't want this to rip or tear. I've never had it rip or tear, but um, I've had it kind of furry a little at the edges, so I'm always a little a little gentler than I would be with, with other bags. So I'm just going to start slowly pressing it out. Now that I have this all turned inside out, I'm going to take this over the iron and I'm going to iron everything nice and smooth. Since I have vinyl on my exterior, I'll be ironing, ironing from the interior side, the lining side, and I'm just going to be working um, and rolling out those seams so that I can get a really nice finish on that. I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from that seam we just sewed all the way around the wallet. When I get to the flat portion, I'm going to make sure that I pull it out and I top stitch just below it but keeping a firm pull on it so that it doesn't try to fold back in. Now that I have top stitched around the perimeter of the wallet and we have the flap attached, this completes the second component of this wallet. So you're already having part one and part two done. Now you're not necessarily halfway done because the other steps take a little bit longer, but you can see how quickly this is already coming together. Now for the next step, we're gonna be working on the credit card slots. I already have the credit card slots that I'm using in this wallet completed. I wanted to do this to save a little bit of time and effort, but I am gonna still show you how to do it. In this pattern, they call for you to cut out two pieces for your credit card slots, and yours would look exactly like this. What a lot of us do is we double that. 
And so we end up cutting out a 16 by 16 inch square. That is what I do with mine. But for the purpose of this video, my, my setup isn't big enough to show you that accurately. So I did not feel like I'd be able to do an accurate representation. So I wanted to cut out like the pattern says so you can see it clearly. But I've already got mine sewn. So what I do first is I have the pieces for the credit card slots cut out. I do not put any interfacing on the back of my credit card slots while I'm making them. So it's just a cotton woven. I also need to cut out the credit card slot backing. This is one piece and I do interface it with an SF101 equivalent. I also go ahead and cut out another piece of SF101 the exact same size as my backing. After I fold my credit card slots, I will then attach my interfacing to it. The reason why I don't do it ahead of time is because I feel like having the woven interfacing while I'm folding everything creates a lot of bulk that I don't like. But I feel like after I stabilize the credit card slots with this piece, it still feels great and I still, I still get really stable credit card slots and I like the way they feel personally. You may not like it this way. You can try it and see if you do, but this is the way I do it. So for the first step, I have my piece cut out exactly like the pattern calls for. I make a T at the top to let me know where the top is going to be. In the pattern, they give you a series of measurements to mark on the wrong side of your material. I lay that out with the T to the left and the rest of the fabric to the right. I start off by just pinching that first line right sides together. I do not use an iron at any step while I'm making my credit card slots. I iron them after I'm finished. That way I know that everything looks good and I can adjust before I hit the iron. If I'm iron every time, if I flip them over and look at them and they look crazy, then I have to really like work harder <laughs> than just move it around. So let's throw that again. Top is over here, the rest of it's here. Pinch that first at the line. And I am just using my fingers to kind of press that together. Lots of times I will put a clip there just to hold it in place. I always check to make sure when I'm folding that my sides are staying even. And you won't be able to see that line, but it's right here at the top. So that was right sides together. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it wrong sides together. I usually use a piece of paper, a card stock. I actually just had an envelope, envelope beside me, so I'm grabbing it. And I put that edge right there against that line that I just drew, the second line. And then I just fold on it. That's my next crease. I take out my piece of paper or my card stock. And then I just move my clip to have those folds together. Then I'm back to where I pinch right sides together. I move my clip again. I'm going to continue to do this all the way down. So now I'm going to use my card here and I'm going to fold it wrong sides together on that card. The reason why I use paper or card is because you would be folding blind this way and you wouldn't be able to see for sure if you got it right in that crease. I slip it down while my hand's still there and then I just move my clips again. Now I'm back to pinching right sides together. Pull that up. I just do a quick finger press there. Move my clips. Sometimes I use more than one clip if it gets a little like you feel like you want more than one clip, but I don't even know if I have any clips beside me. So we're just using one. And then my last one, we only had six lines we drew, is going to be again with my envelope. And I just put it right there and fold that down. Crease that. 
when I turn it over, I don't know if you can see that, but I have three card slots. I look at them, I can see they're all evenly spaced. They look great. I'm going to check and make sure my sides are even, which they are. And so now, at this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this over to the iron now like this. And now is the time when I'm going to iron everything down and lock all of these pleats into place. If you follow the pattern directions, you'll have another one like this that you will do the same way. If you cut it out 16 by 16, you only do it one time. After you get this ironed out, that is the step where you take it and you're going to top stitch. So when I have this ironed, then what I do as I take my clips out and I can top stitch along the top of each one of these pleats. The top stitching does not do anything, it's just for looks. So if you decide that you don't want to do the top stitching, you don't have to. That is just a personal preference. What? So now we're at this point. We've ironed them flat, you've top stitched across the top. The next thing I do is I just baste down each side. I do not have any interfacing on mine yet. The other thing you need to do in the pattern is you will always have to trim a little bit off the bottom. She gives you the exact measurements as to what each piece of the each side of the car slots will measure. But look at the pattern and measure yours and cut it to make sure it's exactly the same size that she tells you in the pattern. Once you have two of those, the right measurements and iron properly. What we're going to do now is we're going to put them right sides together. We're going to have our credit card slots so the credit card slots are opening to the top. Credit card slots opening to the top. Lay them right sides together. You can clip in place if you feel you need to. And then you're just going to sew along the bottom a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You're going to open that up, take this over to your ironing board, press that seam flat, and if you're doing it my method, this is the time when we add the interfacing. So that SF-101. I ironed that flat first, make sure that seam is pressed down, and then I just put the interfacing on top and hear that. And that gives me, and I'll trim it down of course as I need to, but that will give me my completed credit card slots at this point. So let me go ahead and do that now. So now I have the credit card slots interfaced. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that credit card back and I'm going to put them right sides together. What we're going to do is we're going to sew across the top and the bottom with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You're not sewing down the sides. They are going to be left open. Now that I have sewn at the top and the bottom, I'm just going to turn it inside out. So now that I have them sewn together, you can take this over the iron or you can just press out these seams. That's what I'm going to do with my fingers. And I'm going to top stitch an eighth of an inch away from that seam we just sewed on the top and on the bottom. And then I'm going to baste the, down the sides so this is all one unit and everything's completely secure together. So now that I've top stitched on the top and the bottom and basted the sides, the last thing I need to do to finish these card slots is just make the dividing line down the middle. So I know that they are eight, about eight inches across, so it's pretty easy to just put my four inch ruler down there to find my middle line. Now you can, um, you can draw a line, you can put a piece of washi tape, whatever you want. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So what I'll do is I will just put a clip right here at the bottom and I just know that I'm sewing towards that clip just to separate these card slots. So now that I have that dividing line down the center, 
credit card slots are now done. So we are now done with component three. We're moving on to the last step and then we'll put everything together in our wallet. So the last thing we're working on is our zipper pocket. So let me show you the way the zipper pocket looks just as a reminder. The credit card slots are on this side. It's the black and white stripes on this wallet. The zipper pocket is right here and then the bottom goes right here. A lot of people make this a double, double zipper so you have two zipper pockets. I'm not going to do that. It's really easy to do it but we're just not going to do it for this tutorial today. So the bottom will be right here and you will be able to see your zipper pocket size just in case you're trying to decide on your material still. So for our zipper pocket we need a couple of things. We need we need a front and a back. The measurements for this are given in the pattern. I went ahead and interfaced these with SF101 equivalent. I honestly think I should go a little stiffer with these. Um, probably not. I don't really want to do a deck of a light, but you could. But I probably want. I'll probably try the Pixie Fuse Premium, which is another interfacing I really like on my next one. But these two pieces, and then your lining pieces. I do not interface my lining pieces with anything. I leave them just cotton woven. Now, for me, I do the zipper a little bit differently. The first thing I do is I only use one zipper tab. On the front of the zipper, I fold down my ends in 90 degree angle. I'm gonna, and then on my back, I'm going to use a zipper tab. Is I take my zipper to my zipper pocket piece and I hold it up to it. I trim off the zipper tape till I have about a quarter to three eighths of an inch clearance on each side. This is different than what the pattern says and you can easily do what the pattern does. So what I do, I don't even measure the zipper tab. I just cut out a, a, a rectangle there and I fold it like double fold bias tape. Let me Once I have this slipped on, I'm going to top stitch this to attach it to my zipper tape and then I'll, compl I'll have the zipper prepped and ready to go. Now that I have the zipper the way I like it prepped, I'm going to go ahead and just make like a regular zipper pouch. So I'll take a lining piece right side up and I will just center my zipper on top of it right side up. So both pieces are right side up for this step. You can put a clip there if you want to, double sided tape, whatever you want to do. You could even go ahead and put your zipper pocket piece right sides down on top of it. I don't, I always just baste first. So first thing I do is I baste the zipper tape onto that lining piece first. Now the next thing I do is I take the zipper pocket piece, the exterior piece, and I just match up the top. And it is right side facing down, so the right side of the zipper and the pocket piece are touching. And now I'm going to sew across this top with a quarter inch seam allowance. Move your zipper pull out of the way while you're sewing. So now I'm just going to separate and push the lining and the exterior wrong sides together and I'm going to top stitch right underneath my zipper, that's line we just sewed, an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge. So now that I have that side top stitch, I'm just going to repeat that process with my remaining lining and exterior pocket piece. Only this time I'm just going to make sure I do line up the sides and not just only the top. Lining is basted. I'll add my exterior piece, right sides together with the zipper. Again, open that up and make sure that from your back your lining is separated and your exteriors are separated and then you're going to top stitch again 
down that opposite side. Now that I have both top stitched, I'm going to open my zipper and I'm going to separate the exteriors from the linings and then I'm going to clip the exteriors right side together and the linings right sides together. When you're doing your lining, you're going to push your zipper teeth so they fold down to the lining. And then I usually just put a clip right there at the side of that. So now that I have this clip together, I'm going to start sewing on my lining side. I'm going to backstitch here and I'm going to sew all the way down to my exterior. Go to the exterior bottom, sew across, sew back up the exterior and to the lining and top stitch here. I'm going to leave the bottom of the lining completely open. Quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to just clip across the corners on the exterior. I'm not going to do any other trimming on this. And then I'm just going to go through the lining and start pushing this out. I'm going to start with the corner, put my thumb in that corner, push that corner out first. Get the rest of it out. I'm going to use my stiletto to poke out all my seams. Whenever you're working with your zipper tabs, if you did yours like the way I did mine, you're just going to poke that out and you will have a small opening there and that's what you want. Your other side, you will not have a zipper tab. So when you close it, it'll just feel like that. Now, I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and get this all pressed flat. And then once you do that, then we're going to go to the bottom and we're going to top stitch across the bottom of this zipper pouch because that gives us this divider right here. Now that you have your zipper pocket completed, that is the last component that you needed to complete. Now it's just time to put everything all together. So pull out your main exterior with your flap attached and place it lining side up. You're going to place your credit card slots right side up on your lining and then you are just going to center this in place. It's going to be pretty even with your flap as far as the width goes and then you should have a little bit on top and bottom. So now that we have that centered on there, I'm just going to use some clips and pull over my sides just like this and clip them in place. Now I want this line of the car slots to be directly in. So I want it to go right up against that. I'm going to use my finger to make for sure that I fill it all down this line. So the first thing I do is I clip and then after I get both sides clipped, then I'll just look at it and make sure it looks even and straight and all that. You can see everything looks good and even. I don't see anything that looks out of the way. Is I'm just going to stitch down each side, that folded edge, a quarter of an inch away. I'm definitely going to make sure that I back stitch well right here on the two sides, top and bottom. And we'll do the same thing over here. This area is getting a little thick depending on what interfacing and materials you're using. If you're having trouble, you can always lengthen your stitch length a little more. I'm going to leave mine at a 3.5. You can also... While I'm sewing this, I'm making sure to constantly be filling with my finger to make sure I still fill those credit card slots because that is an important part to make sure you catch them completely while sewing down your sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up and make sure that I caught my seams properly and that I don't need to go back and fix anything or correct at all. Um, 
If you did miss your seam, just pick out your stitches and stick it back in there. You don't have to pick out the whole thing unless none of it called. The next thing we need to do is add our zipper pocket. Now I want my zipper to close to the left, but that is a personal preference. You get to choose on that. There's a couple different ways you can do this. The main thing you need to understand is that you are going to center this pocket right here in the middle just like you did. It should fit in pretty perfectly on the sides. And then you just look at it, eyeball it, or I, or I eyeball it, I don't know what everybody else does, and, and make sure that you have this about the same amount from your top to your bottom. Some people sew from this side, and that's what the pattern says, but I don't like to do that. Um, I like to be really precise with the stitching that shows on the bottom. This line, this row of stitches shows. There's so what I do is I go ahead and get that out of the way and I flip my wallet over. I know from previous times of sewing this that from this row of top stitching to the bottom row is about eight inches exactly. Same thing this time. So what I do, this is a four inch ruler. So I just put that four inch ruler right up against that top row of top stitching and I go ahead and I get, I'm just going to use some chalk and I'm just going to make a line and this is going to be my middle center midpoint line, what are you going to call it? So now I got a center line on my back. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line a half an inch above and a half an inch below that center mark there. So now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I have three lines. My center line and then a line a half inch above, a line a half inch below. So now what I do is I turn it back over, but then I take my zipper pocket back out and I place it back in the center. Go ahead and get everything oriented again properly. Check my tops and bottoms. And then what I do is I just grab a clip or two and I just clip there at the bottom. You could use double-sided tape in the middle, but I don't really feel like it, it shifts much because it is such a tight fit there. So then I pick it up carefully, holding that in place, and I take it over my, to my machine. I slide under my machine, this is, and I go right to this first row of top stitching that I have on the side. I line up my needle exactly in that row of top stitching right where that top line is. I pull out my side and I go ahead and put my needle down right there perfectly. I want to pull out this side because I do not want to catch any of it in there. I'm going to stitch from this row of top stitching on my side all the way down that line I drew, the top line, to my second row of top stitching. When I get to this second row, this bottom row of top stitching, again, I'm going to pull that flap out of the way so I can put my needle right exactly in that stitch I made with the top stitching without getting that side caught in there anymore. Pulling that side away. Put the needle right in that previous top stitching back stitch. Come forward. Now I'm going to skip that center line. I'm not sewing on it. I don't need to. And I'm going to go to that last line I drew at the bottom. Again, pull this out. Put my needle down right where that stop top stitching begins. And I have that completed there on the inside. We are almost done. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put our gussets on the wallet. On your paper pattern piece, they have, and actually in the pattern, there is two ways to mark your gusset placements on your sides. Um, I felt for me the, the best way to do it was to cut a template out of the pattern. So the paper pattern, I just made this out of a clear plastic board. I line it up, and what I want to do is this line, I want that gusset to intersect it. So I'm gonna put it right 
there along this curve and this line and I'm going to actually draw a line onto my side here. I'll hold this up and show it to you. I don't know if you can see that properly, but that is going to be my first placement for where I put my sides here. Let me draw it on the other side. I line up this point with that middle line and this is going to be up against the curve. If you have any questions on this part, let me know. So you can see I have my two lines there. So once I get those two lines drawn on here, what I do is I pull up, and this one is the bottom of the zipper pocket, and I'm going to put it right there where that line is, and I'm just going to pinch it around there. Now I'm going to use some clips to hold that in place. And the pattern tells you to sew down that a quarter of an inch. Well, when I first started making these, one of the complaints I had is I felt like it opened really wide and even like things could easily like fall out when you opened it. So I didn't like that. So you can sew down a quarter of an inch, but I prefer to do the rivet option. And I even put my rivet in further than a quarter of an inch. And so that makes it not open as wide. For me, that works better. I'm going to go ahead and open my zipper a little bit. For me, that works better because it just feels a little more secure. And I feel like it's easier just to rivet this and be done. So I got that side clipped in place. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side using my template and those lines I just sewed. It doesn't matter what you use to mark those lines with because these lines will not be seen at the end. I guess if you mess up and have to draw different sets, it could be, but it'd be really hard to see them the way this is pinched together and everything. So I wouldn't worry too much about that part. After I get all of this clipped in place, before I start riveting, I'm going to look at everything and see if I like the way it looks and if I need to make any adjustments. Now you want to push this in so you want to be able to feel that. And on this one, I feel like it's coming not I'm going to start with that bottom one to get it clipped in there really nicely. Okay, now I'm going to look at everything and see how I feel about it. Okay, so look good. When I look down there, do I feel like everything looks even? Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but I'm not a perfect sewist either. I feel like that all looks good. I feel very comfortable with that. So now I'm going to start riveting this in place. I don't measure my rivets, and I probably should, but I don't. I use a handheld. I do have the rivet press with the um, hole puncher on it, but I just feel like with this one, this one get with this wallet, this device gets in there easier. So what I do is I just, well, first thing I do is I get my rivets out because I want them close at hand so I could just snap them in place whenever I'm ready. And I am using, what am I using? 10 millimeter. So, like I said, I don't measure. I pull everything down, but I make sure to feel to make sure I have that zipper pocket piece in there. I do not want to rivet without it in there. I mean, I could fix it, but what would be the point? I go in more than a fourth of an inch. I say probably about three eighths, and then I just push. Whenever I take it out, I don't let go, and I go ahead and put my rivet in immediately through both sides. I'm using double cap rivet, so I just snap the other on. I do each one of these, then I take it up to the rivet press and press them down. So I'm going to speed up this part, but I'm doing them all the same way, pushing everything out of the way, feeling to make sure that I'm getting everything in before I push down and snap it. Yes, I do two rivets on each side. You could do one probably and be fine, but 
I do too. And I'm going to do that for the remaining three sides. So now that I have all the rivets placed, now I'm just going to use my rivet press to lock those in. So again, I just separate everything. It's kind of a tight fit. And just seek that in the rivet. And I can't do this sitting down, so I'll stand up and do that. And I'm going to get all of these set. And then that is it. My wallet is done. So aside from some loose threads, my wallet is now done. Everything is completed and put together. The lining looks great and I couldn't be more pleased with it. Every time I make this, I'm surprised by how quick and easy this wallet is and how it comes together. I love it so much. Um, thank you so much for spending New Year's Eve with me and for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you have any suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see in the future, please let me know in the comments and I hope that you guys make this wallet and that you post pictures of yours. I'll be watching to see them. Tag me in them if you want on Facebook and I hope you guys have a great year and that you meet all the goals you set for yourself this year in 2023. Thank you so much.